Yeah, we're talking cover crops. Cover and crop. I know you know a little bit about cover crops. I do. So let's start with this one. What are cover crops? Okay, well, you know, uh, you could just say uh, it's farming with no bare ground. Okay. I mean, you, you, could, you could say that. And uh, um, essentially what you don't want in a garden is any bare ground. Sure. So then why do we need to plant the cover crop? Well, uh, there's a lot of good reasons, and I, I'd kind of like to put it in context. And one is that uh, it, we as gardeners and farmers, I think we have a responsibility to, to at least preserve the quality of our soil and improve it. And mm -hmm. so there is a, there's a, a full range of practices called regenerative uh, farming, of which cover crops is a part of it, okay. to build soil health over time, uh, which is important mm -hmm. because uh, we don't digest food, the microbes in our gut right. do, okay? So we want to eat healthy plants, and healthy sure. plants don't digest food either. They, uh, the microbes in the soil digest it and then grow into their roots and inject it in there. So, uh, so that, that's why if you have bare ground, there's nothing for the microbes to eat, and uh, they die. And uh, so that's another reason for, uh, for having, so the reasons, uh, well, uh, you know, prevent uh, or reduce soil erosion. And we okay. all know, like Dr. Right. John Bradley said uh, one time, they, these farmers think that a, a beautifully plowed field <laughs> is beautiful, right? right? And it's out there doing soil and uh, wind erosion, right. you know, so we want to prevent that. Uh, we want to reduce compaction mm -hmm. uh, uh, by improving tilth. And essentially what we're trying to do is, uh, there was a quote this morning uh, by a friend of mine that said, it's, it's not really how much rain you get, it's how much you keep. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You mm -hmm. know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. so they, uh, if you have a cover crop on there, you're retaining much more of the moisture. And if you look on the side of the road, how green all those plants and trees are, uh, hmm. because they got good soil structure and all these things. Okay. Uh, yeah. And others, you're increasing soil health and fertility. And, and essentially, uh, you're feeding the microbes in the soil. And, that, uh, uh, and, and others, you're increasing soil structure, mm -hmm. such as uh, uh, porosity. As <laughs> this year's crops die, they um, leave little, uh, the roots uh, uh, decompose, mm -hmm. leaving little air and water channels, uh, which is a good thing. That's good. And, uh, and frankly, a lot of plants uh, pro uh, produce or scavenge nutrients. Uh, so what, what kind of cover crops, you know, can we use? Well, you know, just about anything, garden. like if you're, uh, it depends on whether you're trying to do this in the summer or spring, fall, winter. Right now we're kind of talking about winter. Right. So something that grows uh, during the winter. Uh, things like greens, turnip greens, mm -hmm. uh, uh, rutabagas, and uh, so forth. My, my uh, hakura uh, turnips that grew all last winter, this spring, I'm still pulling them up. You know, they're still great big white <laughs> turnips. Uh, of course, we didn't have a winter. Uh, 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 annual ryegrass, uh, winter wheat, uh, and stuff like that. You know, uh, when y'all were talking about, uh, you know, last week about... Uh, Chickweed, mm -hmm. how do you get chickweed? Well, it just depends on how, uh, in the spring, how, how late can you wait before you start planting. Well, if you plant a good, thick uh, rye or, or winter wheat, it'll choke out sure. the chickweed. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can do it uh, organically without spraying anything. True. You know, That's and, uh, okay. Um, then, uh, you know, like I said, various gra uh, grains, various legumes, clover, vetch, you know, peas, even, you know, I don't know if it'd be a cover crop, but I, <laughs> I grew fava beans last winter. Hmm. You know, fava beans like cold weather. So, okay. so anyway, always trying something, right? Experiment about something. something right? and, uh, you're master gardener. You, know, you <laughs> got to do that. <laughs> Everything's an experiment. No <laughs> That's failures. Right. That's right. And I guess somebody's probably thinking, hey, aren't some of these weeds that are out here considered to be cover crops? Why not? Yeah. yeah why why, why can like. they be? And I, yeah. I'd rather have chickweed there than bare ground. That's right. Uh, yeah, you just uh, the land, the land, the uh, land Institute, West Jackson, is growing uh, grains in prairie grass that has 231 species of plants in there that uh, 230 of them are weeds. Mm. You know? I see. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, it's soil How do you diversity. Define a weed? And, right, yeah, that's right. That's right. It, a weed's something that's hard to pull up. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. And we're pretty much the one that defines it as a weed. Right. You know? If you're gardening yeah. for wildlife, they're like, please, please leave the weeds. That's, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's true. Let me ask you about the legumes. So, why are legumes important okay. as a cover crop? All right. Because uh, folks hit it all the time. Yeah. So, why? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Chris, the. Uh, 
the answer is they fix nitrogen uh -huh. out of the air uh, into the ectomycorrhizal fungi wow. uh, okay. uh, that grow <laughs> on the side of the roots. Okay. Uh, and they uh, take the nitrogen out of the air and, and uh, uh, fix it to these nodules. Uh, okay. uh, and so it's in the soil. So you're getting free nitrogen. Free. Okay. By the way, you know where the, um, now this is a rhetorical question, you know where most of the nitrogen comes from? And it's not that plant in Millington, but uh, it's from lightning. Mm -hmm. Lightning and uh, that and the microbes, which are tiny enough to be able to break down larger molecules and separate from that. Uh, well, let me ask you about this too about the cover crop. So, do we need to till those under or, or what? Uh, or I would like them there. Uh, like John, Doctor, I'm following my one of my heroes, uh, okay. Doctor John Bradley, and somebody come up with a good reason to till. Hmm. You know, somebody and, and you know, let, let's just start with if you had roots on your plants. Would you cut off 99% of the roots? <laughs> you wouldn't, would you? <laughs> no. Well, the root system on a plant, since it's been fed by all of these little fungus roots, is spread over a vast area. That's why it's able to pick up nutrients and water and everything from a wide area mm -hmm. and grow mm -hmm. into the plant. If you go out there and till, you're just cutting up mm -hmm. all of that web, that web that exists okay. that feeds the plants. So that, that's, that's one, that's good enough for me. There are okay. other reasons. Okay. Okay. You don't till it, you kill it and seed through it. You, you drill it. You drill, drill it. it. Right. Drill it. Yes, but you're going to have to do something to get the cover crop down to be able to do that, correct? Well, uh, Wes Jackson doesn't up at the Land Institute, but yeah. Uh, uh, one, another one of my heroes, Stanley Wise, is a uh, uh, county agent down in uh, Union County, yeah. Mississippi. He's going to take an, a drill, an actual drill, and drilled holes in his garden. And I put uh, that, in. and you can mulch and kill your uh, weeds, smother mm -hmm. them, smother them down. Yeah. You know, you don't have to spray. All right, good, good stuff, stuff, man. We appreciate yeah. it. Oh, I yeah, love appreciate it. Appreciate that I information, love it. Mr. Carl. Good stuff.